Hey, New Life Youth, welcome to weekly devotions from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Uh, we'll be doing this uh, for the next little while while we're living in isolation. It's a way of encouraging us uh, to keep trusting Jesus during these times. I think Tim's got a bit more to say somewhere over there. Thanks, Tim. Yes, I do have more to say. I have more to say about the uncertainty that we're feeling at this time of isolation in our homes. There's all kinds of uncertainty we're feeling, isn't there? Maybe you're wondering when you're going to be going back to school. Maybe you're wondering when you're going to see your friends again next. Or maybe you're just wondering whether the friends you've got now are still going to be the friends that you have when we come out of this period of time. Maybe you're wondering when you're going to see your grandparents next or when you're going to get on the AFL field or the rugby field or the soccer field or netball or whatever it might be, whatever sport you play. There's all kinds of uncertainty uh, that we're living with at the moment. I think, I think Tim's got something to say over there. You're right, Tim. There's lots we're uncertain about. But we can be certain about what matters most. And Paul writes about that in the book of 1 Corinthians in chapter 15. Listen to what he reminds the Corinthians in verse 1 and 2 and what he reminds us today. He says, Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. So what is it here that Paul reminds us that matters more than anything else? It's the gospel. Uh, it's the good news about Jesus. It's the message about what he has done. And Paul goes on uh, from verse 3, fleshing out what that gospel message is. And I'll keep reading. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. There you have it, the gospel. Christ died, according to the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised, according to the scriptures. And he appeared uh, to not just one person, not just two people, not just to his disciples and his apostles. He appeared to more than 500 people at the one time time and it's interesting that Paul is specifically pointing to these resurrection appearances of Jesus he wants us to have certainty about this gospel message he wants us to know that we can trust the gospel message he shows us that what Jesus has done is anchored in history and that when he rose again to new life he appeared to real people in real time and in real space. And that shows us that we can have confidence and that we can have certainty in this message uh, that we've staked our lives on. Well, that's all I've got to say, but I've heard that Tim has something to say over there. Actually, Tim, not over there, over here. It's interesting that Paul is the one that brought the gospel message, the message about Jesus, to the Corinthians. Spend some time reflecting on who brought the gospel message to you. Was it your parents? Or was it a friend, a teacher perhaps, or a youth leader? Who did you first hear about Jesus from? And then what difference has it made to your life? How are you living now that is differently to how you were living before. And I want to leave you with a challenge, a challenge to me memorize a part of scripture. Have a crack over the course of the coming weeks, uh, heading into Easter and then over the school holidays, have a go at memorizing 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 to 11. Now you guys have memorized Bible verses before or a memory verse 
before and you've done a pretty good job. But this is a larger section, uh, so you'll need to break it down into smaller bits, but have a crack at just spending a little bit of time each day just learning bit by bit uh, as much of this passage as you can. How about I pray? Father God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he came and that he died and that he was buried, that he rose to new life and that he appeared to many people. Thank you that because of this message that is anchored in history in real time and in real space where there were real people, thank you that we can have certainty and we can have confidence in the truth of this message so much so that we can stake our whole lives on it. Help us this Easter to reflect on that message, on this message, uh, and to be drawn again to trusting Jesus. Amen.